Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship at Midway. Uh, we're so glad that you joined us today for worship. I ask that you would register your attendance by using the link there uh, on the stream. We are worshiping exclusively online uh, this morning because our parking lot is being redone. So we look forward to being back together with a nice, new, safe parking lot. Let us now join together in the call to worship. Friends, what do you see? We see that God has set a path before us. What else do you see? We see that God is among us. And what else do you see? We see that God calls us to be prophets. Together, we will speak God's truth to injustice. Amen. Let us pray. God of all prophets, you call all of us to be prophets. Like shepherds with their sheep, you guide us in the direction you wish us to go. You make clear the path of goodness and righteousness. You set a plumb line for us to follow, an example guiding us toward the way. May we be aware of your presence in our hearts today as we use this time to prepare us for the journey to come. Amen. And if you have your hymnals at home, if you'll turn to number 428 and sing with me where nobody can hear you for the healing of the nation. Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us consider 
your word, O oh God, and allow it to permeate our hearts, even if it's a hard word to hear. God, in this time, we need prophets. We need people who will share the truth in our world because we can see that it's, it's broken. There's death, there's sickness, loneliness, hunger, addiction, pain, and suffering. Lord, we know these things sadden you, and we pray for your grace and mercy. We pray that you would raise up prophets to point us to the areas we have ignored. We pray that you would encourage people to provide comfort and healing, to provide people for the sick and hurting, provide people for those ex experiencing addiction, provide your presence for all. We ask these things and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And now we join together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Pedro. Let us pray. God, I pray that in this time you would speak through me. And let the words that are heard be your words. God, let them affect our hearts, transforming us so that we might follow your will and your way. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning starts out with the image of a plumb line. And this isn't something that I was very familiar with. Um, I, I don't work in construction very often, so... And I did a little research, and a plumb line is a straight line with a wave at the end of it. It is meant to measure how, how straight a wall is. So if a plumb line actually hits the wall, that means that the wall is not straight and needs to be torn down or fixed. So our story today, our scripture this morning, it highlights the use of a plumb line to measure the people of the northern kingdom of Israel. Our verses come from Amos chapter 7, verse 7 through 17. And if you've got your Bibles at home, go ahead and open it up. You can also find it in your Bible app on your phone. But a little bit of background about this passage. Amos. Amos is the author here. He's the prophet. He is speaking to the northern kingdom. Last we heard, when we looked at David and, and King David, there was, um, David's kingdom was split in two after his son, King Solomon, died. So Amos was born into and lived in the southern kingdom. He kept animals and cared for fruit. But then God called him, and you might say he's a second career prophet. He, didn't, uh, he wasn't born into this uh, ministry, but, his, but he was called from God. God called him and sent him to the northern kingdom to share some hard truths with them about how they had strayed from God. Let's hear what Amos had to say. Amos chapter 7, verses 7 through 17. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. 
Then Amazah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah and said, I am no longer, I am no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people, Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus says the Lord, Your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile, away from its land. The word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. To understand what this fuss is all about, why these people are so angry, we have to look um, at, at the kingdom of Israel and what had happened. Like I said, King David had united all of the kingdoms under his name. All 12 tribes of is Israel were united under David. His son Solomon took the throne after he died. And after Solomon died, the kingdom split in two. You had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was called Israel, and it encompassed ten tribes of Israel. And the southern kingdom was called Judah, and that was comprised of two of the tribes of Israel. Now if you remember, the temple that God had Solomon build was located in Judah. So, the first king over Israel, the northern kingdom, Jeroboam I, when he took over, he didn't want people traveling down to the southern kingdom to worship God there. So he built places of worship at the place called Bethel and Dan. He appointed a priesthood to oversee these places of worship. Now the problem with this plan was that God had already appointed a priesthood. He had already appointed people that were holy and set apart. And none of those people were the ones that Jeroboam used. The second problem with Jeroboam's plan was that God had told the people to worship only at the temple. And while Bethel and Dan is not the same as the temple in Jerusalem, so fast forward a couple of hundred years to 786 BCE, and we see that the new, uh, the new king is Jeroboam II. We see the worship of God has become idolatrous. Look at verses 12 and 13 in this passage. It said, And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Wait a minute. Whose temple is this? At Bethel, or at, Be at Dan? The priest here doesn't even pretend to say it's God's. He said it was the king's and the kingdom. This belonged to the government. So back to Amos and his prophesying, he went to that temple of Bethel and he told the people that God had measured them and found them crooked. 
and that they would experience difficulty in years to come. Instead of looking to God and searching for God, these people had pretended that they were worshiping God, when in reality they were really worshiping the king. In this instance, the king Jeroboam. The people of the northern kingdom no longer sought after God, but they sought after the king and his government. In his speech, Amos is threatening the status quo. He's threatening this worship of government. He's calling people out for their false worship and their nationalism. Now this indictment against the king may have stung a little. No wonder this king and his priests don't like Amos. In verse 10, Amosiah said, the priest, uh, he spread rumors about Amos to discredit him, to undercut his authority from God. Rumors and lies are used to destabilize any credibility of the leader or organization in question. Now I know we don't see this today, right? Nobody spreads rumors or lies in order to get ahead, especially the people who are in politics or religious organizations. I hope that my sarcasm is coming across on the video. I actually came across this quote this week that highlights the idea of worshiping things over caring for people. It's from North Point Church's pastor, Andy Stanley. And he says, the moment our love for or concern for country takes precedence over our love for people in our country, we are off mission. When saving America diverts energy, focus, and reputation away from saving Americans or human beings, we no longer qualify as the ecclesia or the church. We're merely a political tool, a manipulated voting demographic, a photo op. We give up the moral and ethical high ground. Let me reread the part that really stood out to me. It was the first part of, the, uh, of it. Stanley says, the moment our love for or concern for country takes precedence over our love for people in our country. We are off mission. When we focus on the government or the institution or making sure that those in power are able to stay in power, we are focusing on a thing rather than the people that God so lovingly created. God doesn't want us to uphold these things as sacred. Because things can become idols. Rather, God wants us to focus our attention on the people. True worship of God is found in loving God and loving our neighbor. In the book of Amos, just a few chapters before, God speaks through Amos and makes this clear. I'm going to be reading Amos chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, and I'm going to read it from the New International Version. I think that um, that version gets the point across. Amos, God says through Amos, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. God's pretty clear in that passage. That worship that is not full of love for God and neighbor is not the type of worship that God desires. God does not delight in big cathedrals and, and beautiful churches. God does not delight in the traditional church or contemporary services. 
God doesn't care how much we give to the church. But what God does care about is how we treat its people. Especially how we treat those who are forgotten and oppressed by society. Back to our passage from this morning. In this passage, God looks to Amos and says, Amos, what do you see? Amos responds that he sees religious people who are crooked. They don't measure up to God's expect expectations. Amos says that, that the foundation that these people have built on is crooked. These people ignore the needs of other people. These people worship the government instead of God. These people trample on those who are in need in order to uphold the power of the government or an institution or the status quo. And Amos offers God's word then to the people as an indictment against the kingdom of Israel. So God also asks us then what do you see? Amanda, what do you see? What places in our world are crooked? What places need to be torn down to be built back up straight? Where in the world do we see things that don't measure up to God's expectations of loving God and loving neighbor? There's death. There's sickness, loneliness, anxiety, depression, hunger, addiction, pain and suffering, poverty, neglect of the young and the old, ignoring the needy. There's racism, sexism, ageism, and ableism. I'm sure we could add to this list and keep going. But God calls us to look, to repent, and to change. So I challenge you to look. What do you see? First of all, look at your heart. Examine your heart. In what ways have you held up institutions and government over God and people? And then look. In what ways have you valued the status quo at the expense of others around you? Amos is called to the northern kingdom. His charge to the people of the northern kingdom is the same for us. It's a call to repentance and then action. We are called to look. God asks us, what do you see? Acknowledge the ways that we have ignored justice, we've ignored loving God, and our call is then to repent and act. Actively look at what God is doing, how God is calling us to build a wall that is straight and that is plumb. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray that your word would encourage our hearts, would encourage our minds, and Lord, that we would look, we would see what you see. God, lead us and direct us to repent and act. In your name we pray. Amen. Now it's our time to respond in worship with our tithes and offerings. You can do that through the app or through the website. Uh, thank you for your generosity and for investing in the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ to, through our church. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your generosity. Lord, we pray that you continue, Lord, in putting the hearts of the people to, to continue taking care of the ones that, uh, that you love. Our brothers and sisters, uh, the people who are suffering and who are in need. In your name we pray. Amen.
And we can't wait to see you next week at uh, our 8.30 or 11 o'clock services. And now receive the benediction. Friends, what do you see? Look around you. See where God has measured us and found us crooked. Repent and go into action. Go in the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Go in peace.